Hello, this is Tom from Black Toad Studio, and it's that time of year again for our little apocalypse game between myself and Dom's, using our popular favourite forces. Um, so, obviously, I am now using my Templars for this particular game. And in front of you, I'm just going to pan out a bit further, I'm, I'm right against the wall, so it's a bit hard to get a long shot here. However, we have 10,036 points of Black Templars, or not, not all from Space Marine Codex, there's a couple of units there you can probably see which aren't long in there, but they're, they're mostly my themed Templar army. Um, but I will go into detail, obviously, to show you the list. So, I'm going to try and do this in some form of ordered fashion, however, um, please understand, obviously, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, and everything should be WYSIWYG, um, there shouldn't be anything that's out of, you know, out of sorts or we'll put something different on, essentially. It's all as is. So, we'll start with the HQ choices. So as we come down here, we have four HQs in this army. Um, we have a jump chaplain, um, armed as is, so crazy and bolt pistol. We have Hellbrick, obviously with what he comes with. We have a Terminator chaplain. Um, uh, it's always, a couple of these are freshly painted as well, so you might be seeing a couple of these for the first time. We have an Empress champion, and we have Grimaldis. So that's my four HQs. Now we'll do troops next, just to keep it in order. So. We've got six Crusader squads in total. They're all armed a bit differently. We've got three kind of combat ones and three shooty ones. So start with the combat ones. So we have a 15 man squad here. So that's five near fights and uh, obviously 10 Marines. Um, the Sergeant here has, or the Sword Brother here has a bolt pistol power fist. And then we have an upgrade of a power sword and a melter gun in there. Um, exactly the same in this one, um, except we've done the additional weapon to be another power fist. So we've got two power fists in that squad. Moving over, we have a 20 man squad. Um, 20 man because he's, they're most likely going to be on foot because I haven't really got transport big enough to fit 20 in at the moment. Um, so essentially, it's exactly the same as I just said, except the sergeant this one has a power fist and a grav pistol. Uh, so you have a power sword and a metal gun as well, and obviously the uh, 10 neophytes. Also, just to tag it in the back here, we are on the Cenobite Servitors. Um, I'll, I'll show you what they do when we get to the game. Um, over here, we have the uh, three other choices. Um, so we've got basically three 10 man squads of Bolter style Marines. Uh, the front squad here has a power axe on the sergeant, a saw brother, rather, sorry, um, and obviously a plasma gun there. Then we have a, a dual lightning claw saw brother and a plasma gun. In the rear squad, we have a power axe, plasma gun, and a plasma cannon. Um, the sergeant is uh, running the power axe. Um, they are actually going to be in a rhino. Um, okay, that's all the troop choices. We'll now do elites, which are mostly over on this side of the table. So we'll swing over here. So we've got two squads of terminators here. One standard terminators, one assault terminators. Ten mans of each, obviously. Um, so the terminators at the front here, we obviously have the sergeant with a power sword. We've got a cyclone missile launcher and an assault cannon and one chain fist in there. To the back there we've got five thunder hammer storm shields and five lightning claws. The sergeant's going to be the one with the lightning claws uh, at the back there on the right. Uh, obviously you can't tell the difference but you know we'll uh, make some exception using some of the I think the laurels on the uh, lightning claws were the best way to do it. Um, to the right then we have an apothecary on a bike because uh, they are now an elite choice. Um, to the right of him we have stern guard number one, this is all grav weaponry on this one, so we've got two combi gravs, two grav guns, and then this sergeant has a grav pistol and power sword, and they'll be inside a razorback with twin las cannon. At the back it's basically the same style of squad except it's swapped all the grabs for plasma, so plasma pistol, two plasma guns, uh, combi plasma, and the um, uh, razorback there with the twin las can. Then we have our little dreadnought collection here. Got three standard dreadnoughts, uh, two of the salt cannons, one with a multi melter. Um, the rest is stock on them. And then to the right of them, we have a venerable dreadnought with the twin las cannon. Uh, moving on to the back row here, we have two ironclads. Uh, one has the hurricane bolters, the other one doesn't. Uh, the one that doesn't has got 200 killer missiles, two heavy flamers, and obviously two power fists. So one the seismic hammer and one um, standard. And uh, the other one has a seismic hammer uh, only. So left of them, we have one Contemptor Dreadnought with a Keras Assault Cannon and obviously the, uh, the Chain uh, Fist uh, add on there. And then we have the Derradio Dreadnought, which has got the uh, Avalos uh, Auto Cannons, Heavy Bolters and the Alias Missile Launcher on top. Um, so that's those. 
Uh, last elite choice is actually on this side of the board because I ran out of room. Um, we have a Vanguard squad here. They are all armed with various weapons. I think we've got a couple of power axes in there, three power swords. The sergeant's got a lightning claw and bolt pistol. Then we've got three chain swords and two of them have the storm shields. Um, obviously, if you can't tell, they've all got WYSIWYG, so um, you should be able to see what they all have during the game. Um, I lied, that wasn't the last elite choice. We also have one outside of the Templar ranks. We have three assassins. We have the Kledis, Eversaw, and the Vindicare. Uh, so we're looking forward to trying them out in the new rules. Haven't at all used them yet, so it's all good. So that is all of the elites. We'll do fast attack and flyers now. So we'll come over here. Um, oh, actually, sorry, I did forget the bikes are actually elite choice because it's the company veteran squad. Um, they all armed as what they have. So we have one with a storm shield and a power sword, power sword, combi plasma, combi melter, and a plasma gun. Nothing too special there. And then to the right of them in the fast attack slot, we have one land speeder squadron, all armed with assault cannons and multi melters. So yeah, looking forward to giving them a go as well. It'll be the first time they've had a run out in eighth. And bring up the flyers. Here we have two storm talents. Um, only difference between the two is one has the twin assault cannon, uh, sorry, twin light, uh, las cannons, pardon me, and the other one has the um, uh, cyclone missile, uh, sorry, the typhoon missile launch on it, pardon me. Um, so, so many things going on in my head here. Right, we'll now do heavy choices. Um, so, we've got two Land Raider Crusaders here in the front. They'll be transporting these two 15 man squads here and possibly an additional. Uh, kind of HQ in there to give him a bit more punch. Um, we have a standard Land Raider here. Don't know what he'll be carrying yet, I haven't decided. We have the Deimos uh, Predator uh, Vindicator Destroyer. So that's got the fancy laser destroyer on it. Hopefully give that a go. I like, I like the rules on the new version of it, so we'll see how that performs. Got two Predators, one all LAS, one all Heavy Bolt and Auto Cannon. Uh, we have two Vindicators, and we have the Relic Leviathan Dreadnought. Uh, looking forward to see how he performs. He's all upgraded, got everything there. Got, so Storm Cannon and Siege Claws. Down at the little front row here. We have one Hell Blaster squad, which I finished recently. And we have one um, Centurion Devastator squad. They are armed with grav weapons and missile launchers. So that's pretty simple there. And then finally, at the back here, we have, we've have we allowed ourselves two Super Heavies for this particular game. Because we're trying to do every 5,000 points we play uh, equals one Super Heavy you can uh, chuck in. So I've brought out my uh, Storm Sword over here. Um, I, must be, I haven't looked at the rules in depth on that one yet, so we'll see how that performs. Um, I know it's not quite, uh, well, I don't know, we'll see. I, I've said this before, but um, it might not be as potent as it used to be, but to be honest, just don't know really. Haven't used it, so can't really make a comment. Um, and then to the right of it, we have a Knight Paladin. She's armed as is, I've just finished painting this one as well, so the paint's actually just, just drying on him on the base there, because I hadn't based it yet but he is all finished. I'll be doing a project video with him in as well. However, that will probably have been out by the time this game goes up on the web. So, there we have it. That is my 10,000 points of Black Templars. Now we'll move on to see what Dom has bought for his chaos. This is Dom from Black Toad Studios and this is my 10,000 points of chaos. So we have Chaos Demons mixed in with World Eaters and Word Bearers, so standard Chaos Space Marines. All right, so it's quite a big army here. We're not going to go into too much detail as to what they're individually armed with, because it could take a long time. But at the front here, we've got a Chaos Lord with uh, Lightning Claws on a bike. We've got a Warpsmith. We've, of course, got Khan the Betrayer. We have got a Chaos Lord in Terminator armor with a Power Axe. We've got eight chosen here with a selection of uh, melee weapons. We have five possessed. We've got four squads of eight berserkers. Uh, each of the champions is armed with a power sword. We've got two squads of seven bikes with plasma and power fist at the back, and two melter guns and a lightning claw there. We have got three defilers, two standard, and one with the uh, power scourge got the Lord of War here, the, the Lord of Skulls with the Demigore Cannon and the Skull Hurler. We have got the Soul Grinder. Two squads of five Terminators, both armed pretty identically with a Melter Gun and, uh, oh, sorry, a Combi Melter and a Chain Fist. We have got Bloodletters down the centre here, a few with banners, a few in, without, and a few instruments mixed in there. We have got a Herald of Corn here, 
the Demon Prince of Corn with an axe. We have got eight flesh hounds here. With three squads of blood crushers, two with banners and one without. We've got the uh, Bloodthirster, I can't remember the name of this one, with the giant axe, which is uh, hopefully going to be quite tasty using him in the 8th edition. Three Helldrakes, two from the Word Bearers, and one from the World Eaters here. So moving over to the Word Bearer section, we've got the Dark Apostle at the front, three Sorcerers, two Demon Princes, armed with what they've seen here, axe and claws. We've got a Mauler Fiend of Magma Cutters, a Sakaran Battle Tank there with Heavy Bolt Sponsons, with a Kaitan at the rear. We've got the Raptors down here, so we've got three squads with two Melter Guns, and we've got the Warp Talons at the rear there. There we are. We've got a squad of six at the front here with two Plasma Pistols, uh, Icon of Excess, and Marcus and Anish. We've got the Vulture, of course, at the front here, so there's a Chaos Lord with a Jump Pack, Marcus and Anish. Plasma Pistol and a Power Mall with a Jump Pack. We've got five Chaos Terminators uh, with a Reaper Auto Cannon and a Chain Fist. We've got ten Chaos Marines mounted up in this Lamb Raider. Uh, we have two squads of five in these Rhinos. And finally at the rear here we've got ten Havocs. So that's my 10,000 points. Uh, I did originally come over here with a few more points accidentally. So we've had to uh, edit things out as we've got the Forge World points now. So, very impressive force. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they can do against this horrible Black Templar host. So, here we are. With, this is our yearly game between myself and Tom. Last year we did 7,500 points in 7th edition. This year we've upped the points. We're now doing 10,000. Um, Forces of Chaos versus the Imperium. Um, there's a lot to... Uh, take in on this battlefield here today. Without giving any spoilers away from last year, it was a very close end result and both of us have got something to uh, play for today. A bit of personal pride, a bit of I'm better than you and of course the main thing is fun. We're going to have a great game today. Both armies are looking very impressive and this board, I'm sure you can agree, is looking absolutely beautiful. So the mission today over on this side of the battlefield will be the Chaos Deployment 24 inches into the board and the Imperial forces will be holding from this defence line back there and the objectives are scattered throughout the battlefield. We've got five objectives on the board. So back here we have got this one on there and we have got another one down here. Now if Chaos are holding these by the end of the game they are worth one point each. If the Imperial Forces are able to take them, for the Imperial Forces they're worth two points each. Right, so moving across, we have got one in the centre of the battlefield. And this one here in the crater in the breach in the line is worth three victory points to whichever force is holding it at the end. Moving across, we have got one here on the landing platform. So if Chaos are holding this at the end of the battle, they get two points for this and as uh, the other objectives have across the battlefield, if Imperial are holding this at the end, they get one point. And the last remaining point is down here. So once again, if Chaos are holding this at the Aquila at the end of the battle, they are gaining two points. And if the Imperial are holding it, they gain one. So as we are going to be scoring it, it's the points value of any unit within six inches of that and the army with the more points uh, value around it will gain that point. So that is what we're going to do. That is the mission. We um, are going to be moving on now to deployment and uh, let's have a look at these nasty forces. Additionally, points wise, we are doing killing off HQ models and super heavies, Lords of Wars. So if a HQ model uh, is killed in this game is an additional point for whoever slayed that unit. If a super heavy or Lord of War is killed, they gain an additional two points. So it's going to be very bloody this battle. Um, we're going to have a look at the forces now to see what myself and Tom are both bringing. So um, let's have a look.
Right, so both armies have deployed and this battlefield is looking immense. And down the centre here we can see the Templars are forming a battle line ready to hold back the invading forces. Tom has also put some stuff back here. He's kind of holding back on to the objective somewhat, knowing of course there's going to be some deep strikers and hopefully for the chaos sake they're going to be breaking the line. But we're, we will see what uh, Tom can do about that. So over on this side, very similar story here, holding Storm Talon on this objective on the landing pad. Got a lot of tanks here, a lot of transports as well, which are bristling with troops ready to pour out. Over here, got them holding the line, although it does appear this bit of line here is empty at the moment. So let's have a look to see what he's got in reserve. So the Black Templar reserves are as such, we've got all these squads here. They are all still embarked on their, in their land raiders, in their rhinos, and in their razorbacks. Moving across here, we've got deep strikers. So we've got uh, 21 terminators of different types. And we've got some uh, vanguard veterans there with a chaplain. And of course, we've got the assassins there. So that is the Imperial deployment. So let's see what the chaos forces are bringing. So this is a chaos deployment. Probably not as well organized as the Imperial deployment as there was less room for the Chaos Forces and of course a lot of these guys are uh, touched by corn so they're going to be uh, quite fanatical and uh, ready for uh, conflict. So over here we've got some forces, like a bit fast moving stuff here on the left. We've got some bits holding back onto the battlements and around the, the uh, objectives. In the centre we've got quite a tasty centre here, a lot of berserkers, defilers, the Lord of Skulls, the Kaitan there, it's going to be nasty here. Of course we've got a cheeky little warpsmith there. Over on this side, once again we've got a lot of uh, bloodletters holding back on objectives, we've got a couple of bike squads, we've got a blood first uh, and the Hilldrakes are just at the back here getting ready to uh, fly on and incinerate people. That's a corn, well corn, this is chaos deployment. Well, let's have a look to see what they've got in reserve. So over here on the right, we've got what's in transport. So we've got two squads of five in rhinos and we've got a squad of 10 here in the land raider. Down the mid, over on this side there, we've got everything that is uh, in deep strike. So we've got the, the vulture and we have got four squads of raptors with varying different weaponry. We've got some warp talons at the rear. Moving on this side, we've got five Terminators there, five Terminators there, five Terminators there, and uh, we've got Terminator Lord. So in comparison, the Templars have a lot more Terminators, but of course, the Chaos have a lot more uh, jump infantry. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how the game goes. So currently, um, Tom is going to be going first, unless miraculously the Chaos forces can seize. Let's have a look. Come on, Chaos. Ah, Don't far you, from you it. Use a command point if you want. Yeah, I'm going to use a command point. So, out of 10 command points, we're going to go straight to nine, and this is going to be worth it. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> All right, that's it. So, we're going on to uh, Black Templars, turn one. So, turn one for the Black Templars, and as we join them in the movement phase, there was not a lot of that going on. Um, over here, the <laughs> Storm Tan over here has come forward just to have a little little cheeky nip at the edges possibly and likewise on the other side of the board done exactly the same. Um, other than that uh, we had one dreadnought move slightly forward to add a bit of protection to the front line here but nothing else has really moved. Not Tempo is not quite sure what the chaos has planned so we'll now move on into the shooting phase and see if they can pop a few wounds off. Okay, so as the Templars end their first shooting phase, a few things have been removed from the board, but uh, not much, but it looks, have a look over here to see what has happened. So, pretty much this section of tanks here, so the Storm Lord, the, um, sorry, Storm Sword, uh, Laz Cannons here from the Predator and various other weapons all shot over in this area here, and the Mauler Fiend has been removed from play, along with pretty much the entire bike squad, bar one. Um, a few extra shots rained in on the defiler here and has left it onto three hull points. So that was uh, from various shots over here. Um, it's got a little bit uh, confusing remembering where it all happened, but we'll try and do our best. Um, battle cannon from the middle there from the night, shot at the defiler straight up the middle and didn't manage to do anything. Uh, the laser destroyer, with high hopes on that one, fired an overcharged volley shot at the Kaitan 
However, he passed all his saves, uh, so no damage there. Uh, the <coughs> Centurion uh, Gravs here uh, shot at the uh, sorry, not Rhino, the uh, Land Raider and took it down to six hull points, so not too bad. Um, and then finally over here, we've had a few more shots coming in from various locations here. So from the Land Raiders, the Dreadnoughts and the uh, Marines here and the Flyer. Took the Rhino down to five and I think we took about two, three Berserkers off, so not too much on this side. So slightly better on the left hand side of the board, but other than that, that is all done. So that is the end of turn one for Templars. We'll now move over to turn one for Chaos. Turn one movement for the Chaos Forces. And basically across the line, as you could probably predict, there's been a charge forward. Lots of Berserkers and a Chosen here at advance rather than just move. Defilers are pushing up forwards there, Lord of Skulls and the Khaitan there are both moving, they haven't advanced, which is quite nice. Both the Hell Drake, well two of the Hell Drakes are going to try and engage the Storm Talons across the battlefield. Everyone's pushing up, although the Blood Letters at the moment are kind of holding back in, in preparation for any Deep Strikers that might be coming in to try and claim the rear objectives here. So they are holding back here. And let's have a look to see where else we've got some Chaos Forces. So also at the back of the city, two squads of Terminators and a Chaos Lord have come in here. They're hoping to put a bit of damage into the rear of the Templar lines and hopefully draw a bit far away from the rest of the army, but we will see. So we're going to move on to turn one, Psychic and shooting for Chaos. Turn one shooting and psychic for chaos. So back here we had some bulk shots go off and uh, the combi metal here fired off into the land raider. Uh, we did one wound to land speeder through shooting and we did a couple of wounds here onto the vindicator with this squad here. So that is it. We weren't really expecting too much. Hopefully in a combat they'll do a bit more. Moving across we have the Hell Drake here. He fired his flame out down here incinerating I think four marines. Fell there. Across here, we've got the Lord of Skulls, the Kaitan, the Defile is kind of split fire, causing a bit of damage on the Knight there, taking it down to what the hull points at the moment on the Knight? Actually 19. 19, so I think a bit of damage there, nothing too dramatic. Um, basically, we also had the Sakaran here. Sakaran fired off its accelerator autocannon down the field into the Centurions, killing one and taking two wounds off another one. Havoc's up on top of this building, put some plasma and bulk shells down into the uh, the marines there, killing off one, I think, taking two wounds and killing one, yeah. Yeah, one, two, one wound, yeah. yeah. And finally, over across here, we had the Chaos Lord on his bike, taking out three marines through shooting with his combi bolter. So that was pretty impressive. We're going to move on to assault now, and the blood is going to start to uh, pour across this field. Turn one, Assault for Chaos. So over here we had two attempted charges, one into the land speeders, 41 of the Terminators was killed to Overwatch, and one here to the Vindicator. Of course, that didn't happen there, so not good. Moving across the battlefield here, we got the um, Hell Drake. It took one wound coming into uh, Overwatch from the Assault Cannon, but did five wounds to the Storm Cannon there, so not too bad there, at least holding it in. Over here, the Skull Crushers, they attempted a charge in to break the lines of the Marines. Uh, one of them took one wound to Overwatch and failed their charge. Unfortunately, that was a bit of a pattern this turn of uh, failed charges from the Chaos Forces. So moving across there, we got two other combats. The Possess charged in, doing a lot of damage to the surviving Marines. They were then finished off by the Biker Lord. Kaitan didn't get to strike, so it's just standing there at the moment, but very close to their lines. So it's down to the Black Templars now, how they're going to deal with that. Over here as well, we had another Hail Drake that charged in, but didn't do anything at all to this Storm Talon. Uh, and that is pretty much it for combat. Uh, in the centre for the morale check, they did lose four Neophytes, but thanks to They Shall Know No Fear, they re-rolled their uh, failed test and passed quite happily. So we're going to move on now to turn two for the uh, Black Templars to see what they're going to do in return for this uh, horrible strike.
Okay, as we start turn two for the Templars, that there has been a response on the battlefield towards the Chaos forces. So starting off down here, we have the Ironclad Dreadnought heading towards the uh, Heldrake. Heldrake there uh, to try and uh, obviously get rid of it. The Stormtown has evaded capture for the now and headed this way. Um, we have two more Dreadnoughts in the middle here, the Leviathan and the Standard Contemptor, both having a look at the Kaitan. I'm not sure how that's going to go for them, but we shall see. Um, the Land Raider here deposited Grimaldis and the squad that he is nearby. I'll just separate him out a bit so make sure it's obvious. So there, that Crusader squad is heading into battle, hopefully. A little bit of moving back here. This uh, Laz Cannon Ray's back moved back and this Vindicator has made a little uh, gap for him to shoot through. In the middle here, a 10 man squad got out of the Rhino and then the Rhino moved off. Um, and also, obviously, the Knight Paladin moved into the gap that has been created. Um, we also have the other Crusaders sort of moving forward into battle here. Um, moving over to the back here. Um, Terminator is obviously a little bit of a problem, so we've decided to deal with them as best we can. So the, <laughs> the three land speeders using their special walker getting a 20 inch move have jumped over this way to end up with a nice clear line of sight towards this squad along with the Vindicator and also the bike squad has come to respond with the Apothecary nearby. This uh, ironclad dreadnought has moved around in case things go badly. Um, this, this particular area here, we have three dreadnoughts moving up onto the battlements here towards the Helldrake and also the advancing horde of dogs, berserkers and juggernauts. Quite a lot to deal with there. I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. And also the plasma squad has jumped out to lend assistance along with the Hellblasters on the tower just around here. And also the two Centurion Devastators left have moved forward to plough some fire down and the Storm Town on five wings has managed to just get out of the range, but however, so many flying units in the enemy army, I don't know how long they're going to survive. Still, we'll see if we can fire some shots off. So that is the end of the movement phase. We'll now move on to the shooting phase, because obviously Templars don't do psychic, and we'll see what happens. And also just before the movement phase end, we had the Cladis come in here. She rolled five inches for her uh, kind of distance she's allowed to come in. So she's come at the back here to hopefully cause some trouble. And also the Vindicare Assassin has ended up in his near now new tower up here to see if he can help. The Eversaw has stayed off. And at the end of turn two shooting for Templars, quite a successful turn for them. So we'll just go through some things here. Starting off on this side of the board, we had quite a lot of firepower, uh, ploughing, I think actually most of it into the Kaitan in the end. And as you can see, the Kaitan has gone, but that did take, I believe, the Predator, um, the Land Raider, the Relic Leviathan, the Contemptor, and the Paladin Knight to actually finish off in the end. Uh, got some really good rolls, and unfortunately not some good saves on the other, on the other side. Uh, we had a few shots well into the uh, Heldrake up here, and he's now down to 10. I don't think he actually did that much to him in the end. Um, in the middle here, we had the two Storm Talons flying over. This one uh, fired into, I believe the, I think it was the Lord of Skulls in the end, and he's down to, well, a stupid amount of moons still. And this one uh, fired over to the uh, Defiler, I believe, and that's just turned down to six. So nothing too special for that particular bit. Um, and then moving on to this side of the board, we had the Terminators down here take uh, quite a pounding from this area here, but not as, not as bad as uh, it was expected though. They did lose one squad, but there's still uh, one squad of four and the Lord left over here. So we've still got to deal with them somehow. Over here, we have quite a lot of firepower. I think the Helldrake uh, took quite a substantial amount of firepower, down to six wounds, but not enough to finish it off, obviously. And then uh, the Assault Cannon here shot into the dogs, but unfortunately he did work one uh, base's worth of damage and one extra. And then we had a lot of uh, plasma shots and las cannon shots, etc., going into the Juggernauts. Uh, didn't do anything uh, much other than take one base off. And then this, uh, Land Raider shot his LAS cannons over at the opposing Land Raider down there, and I don't think it did anything because it didn't even hit, <laughs> so to say. Yeah, um, however, also, also Duradio was actually the one who did finish off the, um, uh, the Terminators over here with some very good rolls. So, that is the end of the shooting phase. We'll now move on to the assault phase and see if there's actually any assaults going. I'm sure there's going to be a couple, and we'll see what happens. So at the end of assault phase for the Black Templars, down here the Cladis Assassin charged in, managed to actually kill three of them. However, 
they rolled a one on their leadership, meaning they actually got back D6, so they actually ended up with more than they started with. So she may have to run away from there and try and put a shredder in to do it next turn, if she survives. Um, moving on over here, we had a little tussle here between the uh, Dreadnought and the Helldrake. Um, I think the Helldrake came out worse, uh, but didn't die, so it's sitting on two wounds. Um, we had a couple of failed charges in the middle here, um, which didn't get in, so it was actually this squad here. The Leviathan and the Contempt all failed charges in this area. Not brilliant. Over here, we swing around to the other side of the board. Da, da, da. We have some Terminators in combat and it ended up in a complete stalemate. The Storm Shield on one of the uh, company veterans saving its life several times over. Um, over here, we had the Helldrake, unfortunately, get plucked out of the sky by the Dreadnought here. However, the Dreadnought has been put down to two wounds on Overwatch from the horrible heavy flame it had. So, not good for that. Uh, this Dreadnought managed to take out most of the puppies, <laughs> apart from three. However, I did take a wound back there, so sitting on seven. Uh, all combat in the middle didn't actually really go off anywhere. Uh, I think the next turn is probably going to be quite a bloody phase. So, that is the end of turn two for Templars. We'll now move on to turn two for Chaos. Turn two for the Chaos Forces and the movement phase here. You can just see a mass push once again forward. Some of the Demon Engines, of course, regain their hull points once again. Uh, hull points, sorry, wounds. Once again through Demonic Regeneration. The Havocs here are shuffled up slightly to get a few more shots down to give a bit of supporting fire to the Berserkers and Khan as they charge in. The Juggernauts over here are pushing up. I'm going to break the line here. Berserkers and the Demon Prince also coming up on this flank here. So everything's pushing forward. These have disembarked, hoping to put a bit of support in there. Moving across the battlefield. We've still got some blood that is here, just spreading out slightly. So Karen's repositioned to put some fire down the field as well, over towards that flank there. We're gonna concentrate a lot on that flank. Hopefully we can do something. Over here, bikes have charged forwards here. Demon Prince as well to join the Chaos Lord and we'll see what they can do. Moving across along to the backfield here, back into the city, we have got a squad of Warp Talons that have emerged, a squad of Raptors there, both are eyeing up this Predator to take it out of the battle hopefully. And finally any other reserves we've had coming in, we've got another squad of five Terminators that have appeared on this flank to support the Chaos Lord and the Terminators are already engaged. So a lot has happened. We're gonna move on to shooting and hopefully a few of these uh, followers of the False Emperor will fall. So let's move on to turn two, shooting and psychic. <laughs> turn two, psychic and shooting for chaos. So over on this flank here, the sorcerer down there got warped speed, I think it's called, onto the bike squad, which then did an extra movement and got closer, uh, vol put a volley of uh, bolter shots in and killed off pretty much all the neophytes that's down, down there. Lord of Skulls did some shots and basically him with the uh, Lamb Raider are back there, put a lot of damage into the knights and get down to nine wounds there, so that's quite nice. Defiler here joined it and the bolt pistols off the berserkers they fired into that squad there to make sure they do a bit more damage. Moving across back here, we have melter gun shots coming in here. We ended one wound unfortunately to the Predator. Moving across still, we had some fire, combi bolters and reaper auto cannon fired down into this squad here. One more wound there. Lots of one wounds here and there unfortunately. Um, over here, the Venerable Dreadnought was taken out with a bit of firepower from the, uh, from the bolt pistols here, finished him off. Um, and a couple of bolt gun volleys here and the Havocs joined him. Up here, the Havoc squad here fired down into this squad of Marines, killing off another one, I believe. And Khan fired his plasma pistol up there as well, but he cost his save. And that is pretty much it for the shooting and psychic. We're gonna move into assault, and by the look of it, this turn there's gonna be a lot of assaults going off. So let's move on to turn two, assault for chaos. Turn two, assault for the chaos forces. And here the berserkers managed to charge in. Didn't do it anything at all, worked to the general, but likewise the general didn't do anything back, lots of them in combat. 
Both squads of the Blood Crushers charged in and devastated the squad that was in the trench. Uh, didn't take any casualties back, but consolidating into that squad of Stern Guard at the rear there, which has been uh, quite helpful going forward. Here, Demon Prince charged in, taking this one down to one wound there. Uh, the Dreadnought hit back and took the Demon Prince down to two wounds, so that's not too good for him. Moving over to this side, we have got the over here, the Lord charged in, took out a couple of the bikes, the Terminators carried on, did some more damage, they didn't have anything back in return, which is very helpful for them. Kind of moving into the center, the Chosen made it up onto the battlements here, doing minor damage, but also in return, they lost a couple to Overwatch, and one was killed in the fight back there, which was particularly nasty. Here, we've got the Bloodthirster who charged into the Storm Talon, ripping it out of the sky, doing, I think, in total, like 15 wounds. Mm -hmm. It was nasty, nasty stuff in the center. The Berserkers and the Defiler charged in and just wiped out the squad of Crusaders. I mean, the Berserkers didn't even get their second round of uh, attacks. That's how lethal they were. Next to them, we have the Lord of Skulls, who charged in and did six hull points to the Contemptor, which then exploded, doing damage to everything around it, doing one mortal wound there to um, the Knights, did some to the uh, Champion, killed off the surviving Templars, actually, and everything else, yep, just took damage there, so that's pretty nasty. Moving on to the Chaos backfield, um, after the charges were made, this was my first port call here, and the blood letters there killed off the assassin with relative ease. Um, moving across here, the bikers charged in, did a lot of damage. I think they killed seven in total for this Crusader squad. Seven of them fell, two bikers fell. Uh, the Demon Prince here charged into the Dreadnought, which was locked in combat with the Helldrake, and uh, got rid of him. So it's been pretty brutal here on the front line. There's going to be another wave of attackers as uh, the Templars are going to be sending more reinforcements in. And back here, finally, both squads made it into combat, although it was a bit of a, a fluff, unfortunately, as they weren't really able to do much. The Warp Talons did most of the damage with their Lightning Claws, being able to reroll, and that was it. So we're going to move on to turn three now for the Templars and um, see what they can do, because at the moment, this battlefield is looking horrendous. There are people everywhere. There's small fights breaking out. Definitely down the center here, we can see that is the main uh, point of uh, conflict here, but we are kind of popping up all over the place and the Templars and uh, the Terminators will be appearing shortly. So let's move on to turn three for the Black Templars. So as we commence turn three movement, quite a lot's happened in this turn movement wise. Over here, um, we've had a backward move to try and deal with this little Terminator squad in the back corner. So the, the land speeders and the um, demolisher, no demolisher, demolisher cannon have moved around to try and deal with that. Um, the ironclad dreadnought has turned the corner to hopefully lend a hand against these Terminators here. We've had a teleport strike from the um, Terminators here who have dropped in. And also over here, the Land Raider has backed up to have a few more shots off in this general direction. Uh, a couple more in combat here, obviously can't move. Um, the Land Raider here, after dropping off Hellbrick and his squad at the front line, has reversed to lend firepower against the Juggernauts over here because the Plasma Gun uh, Stern Guards have backed off to try and make sure they have enough shooting power to deal with them because they can't shoot themselves now. Um, everything else here has stayed put in the middle. Uh, except for the knight who's moved around to try and deal with all the scars or who he's limping a bit on low wounds. The Eversaur has seen his opportunity and sprung his trap at the back here, hopefully to deal with the uh, warp talons here, which we'll see. Uh, the Vanguard veterans have dropped in. They couldn't really get close enough to get a charge off, so we're just trying to make sure they're safe for a turn and see if they can jump in for the next turn of combat. And uh, basically down here, the Grav gun stern guard have moved out of their eraser back here. All these vehicles staying still bar the land raider ready to start firing some shots in, even including the Red Leviathan who is standing his ground against the Lord of Skulls. Um, I also just realised I need to move my Storm Town, <laughs> which I will just do now. And all I was going to do was literally drop him about 20 inches this way. So, there we go. That is, ooh, that is done. So that is the movement phase. We'll now move on into the shooting phase and see what the Templars can do. So 
So end of turn three shooting phase for Black Templars. And over here we have the Evasaur who dropped in. He shot his pistol and managed to take out one guy from that squad there. And this uh, Vindicator shot in and did nothing. Oh no, he did, no, sorry, actually he did, sorry. It was the other squad he shot at over here. Managed to kill two off from there. Swing over to the back line here. We had all everything here. So the, the Vindicator and the three uh, land speeders all shoot at the Terminators. Unfortunately taking two out, although that's better than nothing. The little bit of shooting over here that happened was uh, this land raider and this uh, razorback and this land raider basically all shot in to the juggernauts and managed to take out pretty much all of them bar the two in this squad here. So that's not too bad. Um, moving on over here, we had this Storm Talon shoot up at this squad here. Not quite the nearest unit over, here, over on uh, Khan, sadly, to kind of shoot him, but managed to take out three up on that tower there. Now, as we head into the middle here, quite a lot of firepower, all directed at the Bloodthirster, because we didn't really want to tangle with it, although the Emperor's Champion was ready if needed. So honourable. Um, managed to uh, sort of kill that with shooting, including all the Terminator shots that came in at the back there. Really nice amount of shooting from the 10-man Terminator squad. And then we'll sort of just switch, switch our focus over this way. Um, and this is where the Leviathan and the Knight Paladin and various other units over here, including the uh, Storm Sword, all shot into the Lord of Skulls, getting it down to seven wounds. Not brilliant, dude. you got a lot of good saves, to be fair. And then the other thing that managed to get a lot of saves was the Demon Prince here, who managed to take, I think, Grav Guns, Quad Laz Cannons, and various other things, and shrug them off without taking an entire wound at all. So, uh, and also the Vindicare took a cheeky shot over at Khan and managed to chip off one wound. So that is the end of the Templar shooting phase. We're now going to move into the assault phase. We're going to have quite a few assault backs here, I think. Table looking quite messy now. So let's see what happens. So as we power into turn three assault for Templars on this side of the board, this Dreadnought managed to finish off the Demon Prince that was biting at his back. Now let's do it nicely. And this Dreadnought also finished off the two Berserkers that it was in combat with and has gone, let's have some more boys. And has head towards the other Berserker squad coming in. Um, bit of a stalemate over here with the Dreadnought and the uh, Terminator squad, kind of like not really doing much one wound apiece, I think, in the end. Um, the Lord managed to kill off the last company veteran and then sneak off towards the Vindicator over here. Um, shimming over to this side of the board, just to get this out of the way over here. Um, we have one Evasaur Assassin who actually did manage to remove an entire squad of Warp Talons after the leadership was rolled, so not too shabby. Probably one of my favourite Assassins at the moment, I think, out of all three that I've put on the board. Um, moving off to this side, um, we have this kind of combat milling around here. It's kind of not really gone anywhere. It, a, a couple of wounds apiece, so still fighting on there. Nothing much happened. Um, now to the middle where it got a little bit messy. Um, the Lord of Skulls, used, uh, Dom used a command, two command points to interrupt after my initial charger, which was the Relic Leviathan. Um, so even though the Relic Leviathan managed to take down to four, whole, uh, sorry, four wounds, he then counter-attacked uh, and took out the Paladin and the uh, Relic Leviathan. So that was very nice. <laughs> hey. um, but he's obviously just had to decide which way to go, decided, trying to think which was where the worst, least pain would be. And to be honest, there's not really a, much of a choice, so in he goes, into the meat grinder. Um, Hellbricked uh, did very well. He went in and pretty much single-handedly took apart the Berserker squad there, with a little bit of help from his friends. Um, and uh, the Emperor's Champion took on Khan in a duel and pretty much killed him outright, I think, in the end, so he didn't get a fight back, sadly. Uh, and in the middle there, we had the Chosen finish off the Primera squad and uh, have consolidated into the Cenobite Servitors. But well, I have a suspicion probably won't be uh, around next turn to tell the tale. Uh, better get those Hell's Reach items back, uh, Grimaldus, so there's going to be trouble to pay. <laughs> so that is the end of turn three for Templars. We'll now move on into Chaos turn three. All right, turn three movement for Chaos. And it was quite a a hard hitting turn for the Templars previously, so we've now pushed everything we've got into the fight now. These Berserkers are pushing up towards the Dreadnought there, we've got a mix of weapons between Word Bearers and World Eaters. The other squad of Blood Crushers now is able to be do a charge, hopefully, into that squad. This squad here going into the Lamb Raider. 
The Hell Drake that was sitting at the back throughout the battle so far has now glided forwards to try and put a bit of support in. Moving across here, Terminator still locked up against that Dreadnought. The three word bearer ones are pushing up here towards the land speeders with support from another squad of raptors that have deep strike in here. The Chaos Lord has separated himself somewhat from everywhere at the moment. Over here as well, the other squads of raptors have been popping in, so we've got another squad here, lining up shots there onto the Vindicator or to the Assassin. We've got the Vulture and his command squad here at the back, lining up shots once again into there or there. The other Helldrake has jumped onto this objective, sitting on there quite happily. A bit of supporting fire, he's that roosts upon the uh, containers, putting flames down. Um, Demon Prince is pushing up here against the Grav Troops. Both Defilers are moving up to support their brother. Lord of Scars obviously is there, another Lord on a bike there. The Defiler there, Warpsmith and Dark Apostles. So it's like a command squad going in here to this big melee in the middle. And once again, uh, we've got everything is pushing up because now that all the Imperial Deep Strikers have come in, haven't got it to really hold as much back as we were before. So let's have a look to see if the Chaos Forces can do a bit of damage and shooting before they uh, charge into the bloody melees. Turn three, psychic and shooting for chaos. So pretty much the only things we did for psychic fires uh, was a lot of prescience going off. So prescience here, uh, prescience there onto the land raider and prescience up there onto the havocs. Um, kind of helped a little bit, but generally it was a pretty poor shooting phase, unfortunately for chaos, especially for melter guns. Um, so the warped uh, hell drake here, flamed in. We did two wounds in total to the um, Assassin. Both of these melter guns fired at different targets, both didn't do anything. Plasma pistols and bolt pistols took a couple of wounds off, but yeah, really a non-starter on the uh, shooting phase this turn, really. Very little damage, a few wounds here and there, but generally it was pretty poor. So these guys here fired melter guns into the rear here, joined by combi bolters and reapers, and we took maybe three wounds off the... Four, four wounds off the land speeders. Moving across the battlefield, we had fire being ripped in here. Uh, this Dreadnought did die, I believe it was killed by the Hell Drake, um, but these guys all fired in as well, did nothing to this one there. We have Bolt Pistols in combat here against the Servitors, didn't do too much there. The Land Raider fired both its Laz Cannons across the battlefield, hit this Dreadnought and took I think four hull points in total off of that there. We all know that the Storm Talon from the Marine Force has finally been taken out of the skies by a lot of joint fire between the Sakaran, um, the Soul Grinder here, and the Havocs with Prescience all fired in and took it out the air. So now Chaos at least have their air priority at the moment. So we're going to move on to Assault and we're going to really hopefully get some nasty charges off against these Imperial Lapdogs. Turn three, Assault for Chaos. So the Blood Crushers charged in here. One was killed through Overwatch. I don't think they actually did anything at all. Over here, the Terminators did a bit more damage to this Dreadnought, but the Dreadnought was still holding pretty firm there. Over here, we've got the this Dreadnought down to seven wounds. We did lose one Berserker though, which is a bit of a shame. Over here, these guys just thrashed through the uh, Stern Guard, I think, which were there, and they've gone and fired out followed up into that Razorback, which is quite helpful. Over here, the squad of Chosen killed off the last Servitor and have engaged this uh, Centurion as well. That Demon Prince there killed off the Empress Champion. In the centre, it was a bit of a bloody battle. We had a Dark Apostle and the Warp Smith and the Chaos Lord that all charged in. Uh, unfortunately though, the um, Chaos Lord did his attacks and then Tom played a couple of command points in and was able to step in and killed off the um, Dark Apostle and did some damage to the Warp Smith. They then fought back and did a bit of damage and reduced that squad quite dramatically. Yes. So only Hellbrick standing over a couple of remaining Marines. Moving across back down here. Chaos Lord has attempted a long range assault against the Dreadnought to get himself right up there. Uh, he did fail and he took damage through Overwatch. Down over here, the land speeders um, got engaged. One land speeder fell and one Terminator died to Overwatch. 
Moving across the battlefield down here, we have this five-man Raptor squad who attempted to charge into the Vindicator, uh, failed, and two were killed in the Overwatch. Over down by the Bastion, we had some Raptors who attempted a charge and were killed by the Eversaw. These guys here, down here, this one here, that's charged in, failed, didn't do anything there. The Helldrake attacked the Super Heavy here, doing some nice damage. The bikes, still locked in combat, were joined by the Defiler, attacking the Crusader squad and Grimaldus, suffering one bike casualty. They cut back these Templars. The Demon Prince engaged the Stern Guard here, remaining just one, one standing, that's it. And I think that was pretty much everything. A lot of assaults, some went well, some didn't go very well, but it's definitely bloody. It's heating up across the field here. We're gonna move on to turn four for the Black Templars, and uh, I'm sure they're gonna be pushing forward once again into the center. Uh, turn four, movement for Black Templars. Quite a bit of movement happened here to try and get ourselves into positions. Uh, the Land Raider here has backed off from the Juggernaut. It um, uh, kind of doesn't really matter if he stayed in or not because he probably can't kill him. Um, in here, the Terminator squad, or the Assault Terminator squad, has moved around to try and deal with these Juggernauts over here because we can't have them running around. Uh, everything else has backed off to try and obviously aid in some shooting as well. Over here. <laughs> the two uh, land speeders have jumped back out of combat, obviously they can't shoot, but you know, they, they need them out of there, kind of that. Let the Vindicator stay put because he wants to hit on three, see if he can possibly take out a few there. <laughs> the Eversaw has decided to take on another squad of Raptors, hopefully he can add another one to his tally. Um, the Dreadnought over here has decided, just in case he's not quite up to the challenge, to make sure he's nearby. Um, the Predator over here has stayed put, so has the Vindicator. Um, everything here in this area has moved back away from combat apart from Grimaldus's squad who are just going to try and hold the line one more turn. I don't know how that's going to work out for them. However, however the Vanguard have turned up to try and deal with this monstrosity here after the Predator and the uh, Stern Guard there have moved out of combat to help, to help with the shooting here. So we've got quite a few weapons to be able to shoot in this area and obviously we've got to try and do something about that. Um, so uh, in the middle we had another Terminator squad move up towards the Possessed. Chosen, uh, chosen sorry, pardon me, because uh, obviously we need to probably clear them out of that area. And also this 10-man squad has moved up. The Vindicator Destroyer stayed still, has one wound left. We don't know if we're going to overcharge it again. Probably not. We shall see. Um, do you have some command points for reroll? So you never know, might be able to survive a, one more round of it. Um, so that is all the movement. We'll now move on to the shooting phase and see how much damage can be inflicted. As we come to the end of turn four shooting for Templars, there's been a lot of blood spilt in this particular shooting phase. Um, over here, uh, obviously this backed out and didn't do anything, but a, a lot of shots came in from the Land Raider and uh, the chaplain here and took out uh, all but one wound on that Blood Crusher squad. Um, the Terminator's here, obviously moved up there so I couldn't shoot. Um, over here, some uh, lots of shooting came into the Raptor squad that was here and managed to wipe it out. Uh, the Vindicator and the Predator here shot here and took out two of the other Raptors here. Um, we had a bit of a, obviously a backup over here and then lots of shooting into various targets, but I think we only took off four wounds on him, was that in the end? Uh, yeah. That's my... Yeah, that's my... Um, and then yeah. the hero of the day again is the uh, Laser Destroyer who over overcharged and didn't manage to get a one again and took out the Land Raider and then it also blew up and took out D6 mortal wounds to everything within six inches around it and it wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> no, it so um, I think he's taken out way more his value in points now, um, done very well. Um, oh, the Alias, uh, sorry, the Dorado here shot over at the Helldrake and I don't, didn't finish it off but took a couple of wounds off so not too bad. That is all the shooting. We'll now head on into the combat phase and see what happens. Okay, so at the end of turn four for Templars, uh, the assault phase and the morale phase have just ended. So down here, uh, we had a pretty messy combat with the Vanguard and Chaplin charging in however they uh, interrupt from the command points. 
uh, caused the Chapman to die uh, before the uh, Van Gogh got to get their re-rolls and hit him, so not win. But however, the uh, Demon Prince is down to two wounds. Uh, in here, Helbrick, uh, not Helbrick, sorry, Grimaldus is down to one wound after some Defiler uh, pincers have decided to pierce his body partially. And uh, down here also the squad has been sort of whittled down a little bit. In the middle, uh, there was quite a melee here with Helbrick uh, helping out a bit against the Lord, but also um, uh, the other squad that was in there with him has been wiped out to the man from Defiler's and Lord attacks. Um, the Warpsmith went down to a Power Fist attack, so that's, that's cleared out in the middle. As we move over to this side of the table, all the way around here, um, the Terminators did their job as expected and finished off the Juggernaut there. Uh, also, as expected, the Berserkers finished off the remaining Dreadnought. The Chosen were unfortunately wiped out by this Terminator squad as they charged up the ramparts to try and finish them off, which they did successfully. Um, and that is actually it. So that is all the combat. We'll now move on into turn four for Chaos. Turn four movement for Chaos. Over here the Blood Crusher is going in to, for the kill against the Apothecary. These Berserkers are pushing up against the Terminators in a, a last frenzy, not being able to control themselves. This squad have also pushed up to put some covering fire in. The squad of bloodletters here and that squad of bloodletters are both advancing, so they're not just, they need to get in as quick as possible. This squad are pushed up as well. Demon Prince has launched over. This thing has been a bane of the Chaos Army and it needs to die a horrible death. Chaos Marines from this Rhino have deployed. They're going to put some fire in, supported there by the Sorcerer. We might try and get a prescience off. This Hell Drake has flown over towards the center objective, do some damage against that thing with the Chaos Lord giving a bit of backup, hopefully. These Terminators are pushing up as well. Not sure they're gonna be able to do much, but they can build a bit of cover, fire, cover fire in as well. These Terminators are squaring off against the Vindicator. Vindicator, sorry. Uh, these Raptors have jumped over. They're gonna put some fire into those uh, land speeders, that's what they're called. Over here, we have got the Vulture and the rem remnants of his command squad again against this Predator. The battle continues across on this flank with the Defiler that is kind of charging across the trench line to support the Demon Prince. And that is it for Movement for Chaos. There's a lot of moves here. Hopefully it's going to pay off, but we will see. So moving into turn four, Psychic and Shooting. Right, turn for Psychic and Shooting for Chaos. Uh, a bit of a mixed bag, really. I don't think we did a great deal of damage, although we did inflict a lot of casualties on the centre Terminator squad here with the uh, Sakarum firing in with everything it had. It's knocked that squad down to three. The Centurion here was killed by the Havocs, firing their plasmas and bolters in, finally taking him from the battle. Over here, Terminators came under fire from the Berserkers, the Chaos Space Marines and from the Havoc launcher there. And they did one wound onto that squad, which was not particularly very helpful. The Dreadnought here Kate took fire from the Helldrake and Bolter fire there and lost a couple of wounds. Diabolical here with the Melter Guns, both missing with double ones. Moving across the battlefield, we'll find the uh, Vulture and his retinue here, firing in and taking, I think, four wounds in total off of the Predator. Heldrake was still in combat there. And finally across here, we had what firepower we had left. So we had the Havoc Launcher, we had the uh, squad here with Prescience from the Sorcerer, we had the Sorcerer, and we had the Soul Grinder on the backfield firing into this and doing nothing. It passed its saves. It's impossible to take out. <laughs> so we're gonna have to rely on combat to finish him off. So we're going to move on to turn four, Assault for Chaos. And uh, yep, fingers crossed guys, this will not be here. Turn four, Assault for Chaos. So moving across with this Berserker squad, tried their luck. Uh, unfortunately lost three in their number, two to Assault and one in the morale check. We did one wound on the Chaplain there. Moving over, this guy, he charged into the three Terminators and butchered all three. He's then consolidated up into combat with the Lamb Raider there. 
The Hell Drake and the Chaos Lord both charged into combat there and did uh, take it down to four wounds. So that's pretty good going there. Also, combat back here where everything charged into something. So Chaos Terminators from the World Eaters and the Word Bearers charged in, doing a bit of damage onto the uh, Vindicator there, Vindicator there, on four wounds. Back here, two of the Raptors were killed to Overwatch and did one wound in return to the um, to the uh, Raptors uh, to the Land Speeder. Sorry. Across here. It only took the Vulture, but he took out the um, Predator. I think in total he did like eight hits. Yeah, he did eight. That's a lot of horrible damage. Heldrake still gnawing at the Super Heavy here, taking a couple more wounds off of him here. So it's down to 19, I think. Yep, 19 wounds there. Combat here, the Defiler charged in. Charged, did almost nothing. Tom then used his command points and basically on the Vanguard squad here, killed off the Demon Prince. Combat still continues here in the center. This squad of bikes finished off the uh, Crusader squad. The <laughs> Defiler still fighting against the, uh, still against Grimaldus, who's on one wound. In the center, it's still pretty bloody. Chaos Lord is still on one wound, killed off the remaining Marines. We've got four, five, five Crusaders there. Hellbrick is now holding back a squad of Chaos Marines. It is gory, bloody stuff. And that is it for turn four. So it's been a mixed turn. We had some good bits and some not so good bits with the Demon Prince falling. But um, that was that. So we're gonna move on to turn five for the Templars. As we roll into Black Templars turn five movement phase, quite a lot of movement here. So this uh, land speed squadron has jumped back again, trying to get away. They probably won't be able to shoot this turn, obviously. Um, over here, the land raider has turned around, so he can help try and whittle this squad out of the equation, along with the Eversaur and the Vindicator. Uh, moving over this way, we have the Storm Sword, which has moved out of combat with the Helldrake, so he can actually fire some shots. And these two tanks haven't moved, they just turned around. We just turned around just to make it look more realistic. So they're going to probably shoot up at the Helldrake. Um, moving over this way, we have the Dreadnought in the middle there, just moving this way to try and finish off possibly the Lord or them. Who knows? So many, so many options. Uh, we had a turnaround of this Laz Cannon Razorback because it needs to direct its attention this way. And this uh, Land Raider has turned around as well to get at more shooting solutions. Uh, the Terminators have moved this way to try and finish off that Demon Prince. Uh, the Rhino has moved forward just to try and help secure the area. However, it's not looking pretty in the middle at the moment. So I'm not sure that's going to help much. It's probably down to Hellbrick's uh, uh, martial prowess, I have a suspicion. So that is pretty much everything. So we'll now shift on over to the Templar's shooting phase and see what happens. Okay, so at the end of Templar's turn five shooting, quite a successful shooting phase for the Templars. We uh, managed to get rid of this Helldrake here with a, a volley of Laz cannon fire here. And also we managed to wipe out the Raptor uh, Lord along with the Raptors he was with using various firepower from here, here, and also the uh, uh, Assassin. Over this way, um, the Dreadnought fired in all of its weaponry, uh, managed to take out one of the Raptors. So. Fair enough. Um, moving on to this side of the board. Uh, due to the way obviously targeting works in this edition, we had to fire everything at the nearest yeah, unit, not the character. So we ended up taking a Juggernaut with a Land Raider and this Razor back here. Uh, so that was all of the shooting, apart from I think there was one cheeky shot from the uh, Rhino, which didn't actually do anything in the end. So that is all the shooting from that particular phase. We will now move on to the assault phase and see how this levels out. So at the end of Templar's Term 5 Assault, quite a lot to work through. Um, so Chaplin here, I think managed to take a, no, did you, you save both, didn't you? Yeah, save. And he took two wounds. Uh, the Demon Prince almost went down. He's sitting on two wounds at the moment. He took quite a lot of power, but he did actually manage to hit back and take out three in return. Um, over here, we had a suicidal Razorback rush into the uh, Lord. Didn't do anything. He managed to take one wound off. 
The Vindicator has met its end over here from the um, Terminator squad here. Unfortunately, the uh, Dreadnought did not manage to make a charge in to the Lord as well, so not good there. Um, over here, I don't know how Grimaldus is still alive. He's managed to weather a lot of attacks from various locations. Uh, we also managed to hit back quite, we chipped off a few wounds off the Defiers, so not too shabby. I think we both lost a couple in the end, I think two or three. Um, in the middle, and sadly, Hellbrook has fallen. Um, he couldn't quite shrug off all the amount of attacks coming in, although he did manage to take a Lord out with him and a couple of units from the other squad, so uh, in my opinion, he's done pretty good this game anyway. Um, I think that is all of the assaults resolved. So uh, after morale we've done as well, so that is the end of Templar's turn five. We'll now move on to Chaos, turn five. Turn five movement for the Chaos forces. So across the battlefield here, we have got these bikers have kind of broken away. They weren't in combat, they're broken away. They need a sorcerer there. And we're going to try some trickery to try and get launch them forwards even further. Uh, the squad is sitting onto the objective. So Karen's roared forwards now. It's just time to shine. It's going to be putting some accelerator auto cannons down the uh, down the field. Rhino staying put, moving across the back of the field here. You can see there's not really too much left, but these terminators have somehow managed to hold out throughout the entire battle, um, and they're now heading towards the centre here to engage the remaining units. Moving across, we have another slight move. These berserkers are broken from combat. Once the word bearers gave them the signal, they broke from combat and they're gonna get shot. They're uh, gonna shoot this chaplain, hopefully, but we will see. So we're gonna move on to turn five, psychic and shooting for chaos. Right, so turn five shooting. The squad here fired bolt rounds, melter shots and plasmas, as well as supporting fire here from the Havoc launcher into the chaplain and did nothing to him, he still on two wounds. Across the battlefield here, two of the combi belters fired into the biker apothecary and did one wound. The others fired into the dreadnought, taking it down to one wound. It was then taken apart by the Sakaran with his uh, uh, accelerator auto cannons and yet yeah, took it, gone, came over. So we are going to, oh, sorry, one last thing. Warp speed, Abbott here, onto the Sorcerer, onto the bike squad, launching those forward there. So we are gonna move on now to turn five uh, assault and hopefully Chaos Forces can uh, make a, a nice show of, show of themselves. Right, so the end of turn five assault for Chaos. Demon Prince here killed off two Terminators, but that wasn't enough, and they uh, finished him off, unfortunately, with Thunder Hammers. Moving across here, the Terminators and the Raptor charged in, taking it down to two points on that Razorback, so still standing strong, or just about, anyway. Over here, Bloodletters charged in, didn't do any damage, but suffered two back in return. In the centre, uh, there's one Marine left standing there, and everyone else is dead. And the only other thing to report was that the great, fantastic Grimaldus was uh, unfortunately cut in half by a defiler's claw. Get back uh, again. Uh, yeah, he might get back. Bionic legs, maybe. And um, so the defiler's carried on fighting, took a little bit of damage, but still holding strong in there. They're very resilient now in eighth, um, able to hold their own against uh, most things. So. No, let's now have a look to see if the game continues. I apologise to see if the game continues. There we go, and the game is over. Let's have a quick add up of the score and work out what the final points are. All right, so myself and Tom have had a quick add up of points. Okay, so have a quick rundown. So as we said before, the objectives were scattered throughout the battlefield. So the Chaos Forces have been able to manage uh, to score seven points in total through the objectives. Imperial Forces have scored one. So down to super heavy kills. The uh, Imperial Forces, of course, destroyed the Kaitan and the Lord of Skulls. The Chaos Forces destroyed the um, Imperial Knight. So it was four points to the Imperials and two points to the Chaos. 
uh, and then came down to the uh, HQs and Warlord kills. So Chaos started off with a mass disadvantage, having a very high HQ points here. So the Imperial forces have managed to rack up astonishing nine, uh, and the Chaos forces got five. So adding everything up, you can do the math at home if you want, guys. Um, it is 14 points to the Imperial forces, and it is 14 points to chaos. So unfortunately, it is a draw. <laughs> Both forces have uh, been unable to break the other. This fight continues on into the night. Will we know who um, is the final victor? Uh, it's bound to be chaos. But um, in case it's not chaos, we'll, we'll never know. So, um, Tom, do you have a model of the match? Uh, the laser destroyer. The laser an destroyer. An long country mile. Taking out, I think it took out both the super heavies in the end. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. Massive or contributed enough to, the yeah. Fact that it took the Lord's Guards out on Overwatch, I think was amazing. Obviously, a couple of land raiders and some various other bits. It was a very, very potent unit. Yeah, very nice. For myself, it's probably a tag between the Lord of Skulls taking out the Imperial Knight and the Leviathan in a counter attack, yes. which was quite brutal. Or possibly the Terminators and the Lord from the World Eaters right in the backfield, who have been in there, I think, from turn, turn one or turn two. Um, yeah, so they've been there and survived everything the Black Templars could throw them, and they're at the end claiming that objective. So, yeah, really good game. I hope you've all enjoyed watching it. We've definitely enjoyed uh, playing it. And, guys, if you haven't already, give us a like and a subscribe, and of course, tell your friends about us because we are pretty amazing. So, this is Tom and Dom from Black Toad Studios. Thank you very much for viewing, guys. Take care. See you soon.